This is the Wooting 60 HE. It retails for $174.99, and this is the best gaming keyboard on the market, full stop. YouTubers say wild stuff to get your attention at the start of a video, but as of today, that's exactly what this is. You may think you know all there is to know about analog gaming keyboards because you've seen reviews of Wooting's previous boards. You may think that all gaming keyboards are largely trash because they generally lack the build quality and the flexibility of a custom mechanical keyboard. You may not even consider a 60% layout because you need dedicated arrows or a function row. Throughout this video today, I'm going to show you things that challenge all of that, and I'm going to show you the first peripheral I've seen in a really long time that truly offers an advantage in game that you can actually feel. This video is not sponsored by Wooting. There's no partnership here. There's no affiliate deal. I just want to clarify that because this is an overwhelmingly positive look here today. So keyboard switches, mechanicals, and even opticals have one way to transmit data. They're either on or off. You push the switch down. On the way, it hits the actuation point and it sends the on data. You release the switch, it travels back up, and it changes the state to off. Fast gaming switches or fast gaming keyboards are generally marketed to gamers in one of two ways. The first is that they hit the actuation point faster and return faster by physically limiting the travel. The best example of this is the Cherry MX Speed Silver versus the Cherry MX Red. The Red travels four millimeters top to bottom. It actuates at two millimeters or halfway down. The MX Speed travels 3.4 millimeters total, 0.6 millimeters shorter, and it actuates much earlier at 1.2 millimeters. So you're sending that on data faster and the switch is returning faster. The other way fast switches are normally marketed to gamers is by being optical. A beam of light is interrupted instead of a physical mechanical leaf making contact. This this is faster because of something called debounce, a delay programmed into boards to prevent traditional mechanical switches from double sending the information. Optical switches don't need a debounce delay because there's no mechanical leaf actually making contact in there. This would be like switches you've seen from Razer or the Corsair OpX. They have actuation and travel points similar to a Cherry MX Speed, but with the benefit of not having any debounce delay. So opticals in effect should be the fastest switch until you get to switches and boards using the Hall Effect. Hall Effect switches use magnets to transmit data at any point in the travel. The first big example of this that really made waves was the SteelSeries Apex Pro with their OmniPoint switch. This allowed users to set their own actuation point anywhere from 0.4 to 3.6 millimeters. They recently released their own 60% board and with it the OmniPoint 2.0, which now allows for adjustments anywhere from 0.2 to 3.8 millimeters. Wooting uses a switch called Lecker. It's made by Gateron. This allows for actuation at 0.1 millimeter all the way to 4 millimeter. And like the SteelSeries, you can do this on a per key basis. So based on all that, there's every reason to think that a board that uses analog is just going to be inherently faster than a board that uses traditional mechanical or even optical switches. But that in itself is not new or groundbreaking. Wooting, SteelSeries, and Razer all have analog boards in market right now, even though Razer uses analog optical, which measures light instead of using magnets. But this next part is new. You big brains out there probably already put together that the Lecker switch bottoms out 0.2 millimeters further than the Omni 2.0. Now, based on the info I've presented so far, even though it activates 0.1 millimeters faster, it it should technically be slower than OmniPoint because it travels further. Still with me? So Wooting now has a feature called Rapid Trigger. This is the first mind blower. This sends the on data at the actuation point you set, but it sends off data wherever you release and resets the actuation point to right there. You don't have to bottom out and you don't have to wait for the switch to pass the actuation point. You press down, it hits the actuation point, it sends the on data. The microsecond you release and that switch begins to travel up, it's off. Press down again, it's on again. Valorant players, you know that top accuracy is achieved when you're not in motion. Rapid Trigger allows you to start and stop instantly. Move, stop, full accuracy. Move, stop, full accuracy. It is crazy fast and it's available on a per key basis. It's no longer a setting that affects the entire board, though it can if you want. This is a real deal game changer for any game that requires really subtle micro movements, especially Valorant. Feel free to correct me in the comments, but I don't think any competing analog board has this feature right now. Keep in mind too, if you absolutely hate the idea of having a 60% on your desk, even though it offers you a lot more mouse space in gaming, all of the software-based features I'm talking about today are available on all of Wooting's boards, including their full-size 2HE, which is in stock and shipping right now. The main reasons people avoid 60% boards is because they either need that dedicated F row up top or they need dedicated arrows. I can't help you with the F row, but the arrows here are handled amazingly thanks to a feature that, again, I don't think I've seen in any other analog board. They don't just focus on the speed of the switch either. They have fully custom firmware and a mode called Tachyon that disables RGB and prioritizes inputs. It lowers the latency of the board itself to under one millisecond. Me being just a human, I can't test latency claims like that. At least not yet. I might have something on the way that's going to allow me to test stuff like that objectively moving forward. Stay tuned for that. Wooding boards feature analog gamepad emulation. 
PlayStation, like an Xbox controller, which allows you to get gradual movement on a key press, the same way you'd get gradual movement on the analog stick of a controller. This can be really great for driving games or any title where you're on foot sometimes and driving or piloting a vehicle other times. But there are still some issues with this, which is why it's largely dismissed as a gimmick and why you haven't really heard me talk about it a lot on the channel. The first issue is that the actual usefulness of this gamepad feature is highly game specific. Some games like Call of Duty, for example, are not coded to allow you to use keyboard, mouse, and gamepad at the same time. So you pick gamepad input and then your mouse doesn't function. Two, sometimes it requires you to have multiple profiles set up for the same game. One for on foot, one for driving that you have to select depending on what you're doing in that moment in that game. They make this as easy as they can. The board stores four profiles on board. One basic digital profile for everyday use that still allows you to change the actuation and use rapid trigger and three analog profiles for gaming that allow you to access analog movement and some advanced controls like those arrows I mentioned a minute ago. You can always hot swap between profiles or right back to the digital profile, regardless of which one you're in. The third negative is that games that do allow you to use keyboard, mouse, and gamepad input at the same time often have a difficult time trying to decide which input prompts to show you on screen. Like in Far Cry 6, if I touch the keyboard, it's gonna give me Xbox prompts. When I touch my mouse, it's back to keyboard inputs. It's not really a big deal if you already know that game very well, but it can be really confusing and annoying if you're trying to learn a new game. Some games, like Fortnite, have a way to lock which one they're gonna display for you. Incidentally, this is also a really strong board for Fortnite players because it allows analog angles and double movement. But the biggest issue for me is that most of us simply aren't trained to interact with our keyboards this way. If you've been gaming for any length of time on multiple devices, you probably have a really strong sense of how to move an analog joystick with your thumb. It's probably second nature, but most of us use a keyboard simply by pressing the switch until it stops and then releasing it. Honestly, how many of you out there could reliably duplicate pressing a key switch to a certain point and no further. How many of you could do that in the heat of competition? It'd probably take some practice, right? That's where Wooting's Mod Tab feature comes in. Any switch can be assigned to do one thing when you tap it and another when you hold it for a second. So you tap to crouch or hold to go prone, tap for a non-lethal grenade or hold to throw a frag. It's the same key, two functions, so you're moving your fingers off WASD less. This is the same feature that allows us to take this little section and turn it into tap arrows like you may have seen on and Pro boards before. You don't have to worry about holding a function key down. You just tap it for an arrow or hold it for the function that's shown on the key. This is kind of the same idea that we see in the new Steel Series board, but that requires you to press with a certain pressure for one action and a harder press for another. The idea of simplifying that to just tapping is much easier to duplicate in game. There's another feature in here called toggle key that allows you to toggle the on off state of a key with a tap. So say a game only lets you crouch while holding the key down. There's no option to change it to toggle crouch. With this, you could just tap and it would hold that crouch state until you tap again and it would release it. I should definitely mention too that you don't actually have to install their Wootility software on your computer. You can use any Chrome-based browser and make adjustments there and it saves to the memory on the board. While we're talking about it, you can design infinite profiles in the software, you can browse the community for gaming profiles other users have already tweaked, and you can have up to two additional layers for custom rebinds. If you are the kind of crazy keyboard guy that can reliably detect where you are in that key press, they have a feature called DKS or Dynamic Key Stroke. This is similar to SteelSeries implementation, but it allows you to trigger two key presses on your way down at your actuation point in 3.6 millimeters, and then two more going back up. There's so much going on with this board that I had to do this video different than I normally would. It's wild that we've got this far only talking about features. We haven't even talked about the physical design aspects of the board yet. So let's listen to it first, and then I'm gonna show you some really crazy stuff. So you heard a little example of how these switches can sound when they're lubed. The housings are straight MX clone variety, so all the same openers and techniques can be used to lube them, and it does make a difference to both the sound and feel. The stabilizers are another really high point here for a pre-built board. These are plate mount, they fit very snug in the plate, which is good to see, and mine were like obscenely lubed. These two are standard stuff, so you can lube these with a syringe if you need to, or simply remove them and work on them, because all the switches are removable with any standard switch puller. So this board is hot swap, but only for this liquor switch. You can't put any other 
other switches in this keyboard and you can't use these switches in any other keyboard. You do have shine through on the keycaps, really strong, nice RGB LEDs. The PCB is water resistant. The keycaps on the ANSI version are PBT, pretty smooth and all the legends look really nice and crisp. The case is ABS plastic. It has this off-white inspired nylon carry handle. You have a couple layers of sound dampening inside here as well. It is also a standard tray mount config, which is wild. This means that this entire keyboard module can be removed from the case with just a few screws. Then you can put this module in any custom aluminum 60% tray mount case that uses universal mount. So a Tofu 60, or even something a little more exotic like this Salvation 60 from Wilba and Salvation. Because 60 is the standard layout, you can switch up the keycaps to most sets out there with no issue at all. Enthusiasts out there know that GMK keycaps may have interference on north facing switches where they don't bottom out all the way correctly so they don't sound quite right. That is the case here too, but because these switches don't use mechanical contact pins, you can pull these out, rotate them 180 degrees to be south facing. They still work perfect because the magnet is centered and now you can use any GMK set you want. This is huge because you can finally have one board that's a custom mechanical keyboard, but also has industry leading gaming tech under the hood. So you can mod this board like crazy, change the sound dampening in the main case, lube the switches, tune the stabilizers, change the stabilizers, switch the keycaps, even switch the case. I've never seen that in a gaming board. About the only thing they don't want you to mess with is the plate, it's steel. And it's important that this board not have a lot of flex because the Hall effect lives and dies by having a consistent distance between the switches and the PCB. Keep in mind too that Wooting as a company has a singular mission and that is to build these keyboards. No mice, no headsets, no chewing gum, all their innovation, refinement and community feedback, which they really listen to, gets funneled back into improving these keyboards. It is arguably the fastest on the market, even without all the analog controller bells and whistles. It has the most advanced firmware feature set that doesn't require any software to live on your system. They cut corners nowhere on the components and they standardize the assembly so you can completely mod it out to full custom keyboard levels without sacrificing any gaming performance. This is a lot of information today, so it's important to clarify that the adjustable actuation point, the rapid trigger, and the tachyon mode, those are compatible with every game out there. The analog modes are more effective in some games than others, but you'll find little ways to achieve things specific to you in your main game. It's like a sandbox of high-end tools inside your keyboard. Now for the stuff I don't like. Nothing. This is the incredibly rare case where I have nothing to critique. For its intended market, unless you just absolutely have to have wireless, this is a perfect product. In seven years of reviewing, I don't think I've ever said that once. Incredible job. This is my highest recommendation for a gaming keyboard for anyone looking to be at the forefront of staying competitive. And if you want to stay competitive in business, one of the first things you'll need is a domain. One, for a website. Two, for a great looking email. I had a lot of success early in my content career by doing something as simple as having a professional looking signature in my emails and having those emails come from brian at badseedtech.com. Leveling up from that big generic email domain really looks like you're taking your brand seriously. One of the fastest and easiest ways to do that is with Hover. Hover makes it simple to get up and running because you're not worried about a hosting package. You're just locking down your domain. They have this super intuitive admin panel where you can see all your domains at a glance and connect right to the big e-com platforms like Etsy or Shopify. You can forward your domain to your primary social platform too, like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or any other URL. It's a piece of cake to set up and you can steer any potential traffic to where it matters most for you and your business. And you can forward your professional looking email to a Gmail service or use their in-house email service with options for both small and large mailboxes up to one terabyte of storage. It's literally just a few clicks to find your new domain and head through checkout with free privacy and no annoying upsells or add-ons. You can be up and running in just a few minutes. And right now you can save 10% on any of the 400 plus domain extensions they offer by going to hover.com slash badseedtech. Big thanks to Hover for continuing to support the channel and thank you so much for your time. These are in pre-order right now if they're not already sold through. I think July 15th is when the rest of the first shipment gets here. After that, it's going to be like September before the second order arrives. Like I said, if you don't like the 60, the full size is in stock and available right now. I think they have ABS keycaps, but you might want to check the site to double check. Arctis Nova Pro Wireless is up next. Hit me in the comments with any questions. That's it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.